Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today sees the launch of a card that I haven't even benchmarked yet. <sighs> Let's do this. So apologies for the vague introduction, but it's kind of the truth behind it. Generally, when we do graphics card reviews, we'd essentially have something to go off of. So we'd be looking at the aesthetics of the card. We'd be looking at the pricing of the card. We'd be looking at the performance of the card. But at the time of actually filming this, I have no idea on the performance of this card because Nvidia have done something a little bit different. Some might call it crazy. I can sort of see their point, but on the same hand, I'm a little bit like, what the hell are you doing? So essentially today sees the launch of the GTX 1650. Uh, we've got obviously four different partner cards here, ranging from kind of your MSRP palette and Asus cards, all the way up to the kind of more expensive um, cards from Gigabyte and MSI. Now, the problem that we have is Nvidia have actually turned around and said they're not going to be releasing drivers to the press until this card is basically available, which is on Tuesday, the 23rd of April at, I believe it's 2 p.m., when this video would actually be published. So we're going to have to essentially go through everything based on price and aesthetics, and then I'll probably have to do the performance on the day and then just dub over a voiceover. There's no script or anything. I'm completely winging this. So if this video comes out long, apologies, but hopefully it kind of, you know, gives you everything you need to make a well-informed decision as to whether you want to buy one of these cards or not. So that's kind of where we are. It's a bit of a tricky one, but let's kind of, you know, get to it anyway. So starting, I guess, with 1650 and where it's positioned in the market. Obviously, when 1660 and 1660 Ti came out, there was this kind of really weird way of looking at the stack because of pricing. It kind of came down to, do you look at getting a high-end 1660 or a low-end 1660 Ti? And then a, the same with that, high-end 1660 Ti, which was kind of, you know, knocking on the price doors of the 2060, so you just go and get a, a low price 2060. We've got exactly the same here with the 1650. So MSRP for this card, at least in the UK, is £138. Now, obviously, we can't confirm whether the brands are actually hitting this because of the time that I'm recording the video, but both Palette and Azus are saying that they are going to hit MSRP. So with a Palette card to start with, we've got the Storm XOC. We will put kind of, you know, uh, all of the figures of these cards and kind of how they compare against each other in terms of clock speed. Uh, and obviously, we will be showing benchmarks later on later later on if yeah, you get it so all of these cards are for gigabyte uh, memory as well uh, as i say the rest of the specs were put up on the screen in a nice little table and you can see exactly how they compare and make a well-informed decision from there we've also got the azus card so this is the phoenix edition again they generally do hit msrp or they're pretty close to it uh, both these cards are very very small they both you know are extremely tiny i guess you could class them as kind of mini itx graphics cards they are going to fit into the majority of systems out there include a single fan and generally the build quality is you know what you'd expect for the price it's got lots of kind of plastic on it a single tiny kind of fan it's going to be a little bit noisy but for those who are kind of you know conscious about pricing these are going to be the cards that you're going to want to go for uh, in terms of, you know, connectivity options on the palette card, we've got a single HDMI and a DVI port. Nothing kind of too out of the ordinary, but again, what you'd expect. The actual card itself only takes up a single slot. The cooler, a little bit more. Probably not quite double slot, but it's kind of almost there. Now, the other card, obviously talking about the Azus card. Now, this it actually is a dual slot card. Obviously, we get a, a, a more, one more connector on there. So we do end up getting a display port. We end up with a HDMI port and also a DVI port. And there is a little bit of ventilation. Not quite sure why, because this ventilation is not really gonna do much because the cooler is actually within the double kind of slot. But there you go. Again, we have quite a lot of plastic on there. A single uh, fan with quite a small heatsink that's only covering really the GPU core and a little bit of the memory. Um, but yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. For those who wanna you know, do some fast paced gaming, I'm guessing because I haven't done the benchmarks yet, you're probably going to be looking at these cards. So if you're playing Fortnite, Apex Legends, and you're playing on, I don't know, a 1080p, 120 hertz, 144 hertz monitor, these are going to be the perfect kind of price point for you. Now, moving up to kind of the next stage. So the next one is the Gigabyte card. So yes, Gigabyte will have an MSRP card. No doubt about that. They actually said to us they wanted to send us the MSRP card, but instead, alas, the gaming OC came instead. Again, four gig uh, of memory and a little bit more special. So with this card, yes, it has got plastic on there, but straight away you can you can kind of feel the weight difference. There is a much larger heatsink, which basically encompasses the whole of the card. We have heat pipes on there. Again, we don't really have that on these little cards, but pricing wise, this is a little bit different. So we're going to be looking at 157.99. It's quite a big jump from the 130. 
799 or 138 pounds that we're expecting from both the Azus and the palette card. So with that, yes, we get dual fans. Yes, we do get a full size graphics card essentially. So if so kind of size and space is obviously at a premium, this isn't gonna be the card for you. The other thing is these cards don't actually have external power connectors, whereas this and the MSI both have a six pin power connector. So the reason that it has a six pin power connector is purely down to the cooler. The actual card and the GPU core itself physically doesn't need any extra power. That's how low power these cards are. But because it has got two fans, and I believe, again, I haven't even bothered to, to boot this up yet because I've got no drivers for it, but I'm guessing we have LEDs up here. All these little things just draw that little bit extra power and requires you to have a six pin power connector. Other than that, this is a pretty typical design that we'd expect from Gigabyte with their gaming OC series. So we've seen this on the 1660, the 1660 Ti. So we have this full kind of shrouded cooler on there. As I say, we have a full heat pipe, uh, aluminium heat sink on there, copper heat pipes, and we also get the nice back plate as well, like you'd expect. Again, you're, you're kind of paying for extra materials. Whether that equates to, you know, cooling performance, I mean, in theory, this should perform a lot better than the other two MSRP cards, purely because if it can keep it cooler, you can overclock it further, it comes with an overclock as standard, all of that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what you're left with. Again, you've got to make that conscious decision. Do you go for something like this or do you just move up to that next level and get a 1660 MSRP card? In terms of obviously connectors on this, we have DisplayPort, HDMI, another HDMI, and yet another HDMI. I don't know who's going to be running kind of four displays from a card like this. Typically, if you're going to be running four displays, you're probably going to end up going with something a little bit higher end. But yeah, moving on to the next one. So MSI. I don't even know really how to take this. I'm going to try and explain it in such a way that it makes sense because this card is expensive. It's $179.99. Yes, it is a gaming X, so it is their top model, uh, at least in kind of the 1650. Again, you do get a full size card. You get a little bit more styling. I'd probably say this is the better looking card compared to the Gigabyte and of course compared to the other two smaller models. We do get obviously um, twin PCI Express brackets. The cooler doesn't actually protrude any further than the two uh, brackets themselves. But connector wise, we actually have, have less than what's on the Gigabyte card. So we do have HDMI, DisplayPort and another DisplayPort. Other than that, yes, there's a, a little bit of extra branding. We don't actually get a backplate on here, but I'm not really too bothered about the backplate because we still do get some nice kind of detailing with the Dragon on the PCB. So it is a nice looking card. How that performs, I really don't know. I really wish that I could tell you right now, but I'm probably gonna, as I say, have to do a little bit of a voiceover to kind of go through this. So I guess, where do I stand on sort of which card to buy? I can't really tell you at this point in time. Yes, we will have written reviews on all this stuff, so you'll be able to kind of make your own conscious decision as to which one is the one for you. And as I say, at the end of this video, we'll be showing all the benchmarks and also doing a little bit of a voiceover to sort of, you know, I guess, explain the results a little bit because I can't wait to actually overclock these and see how far I can kind of push them towards, you know, 1660 and 1660 Ti territory. How much extra frame rate that gives us as well. But based on the face of it, if you're wanting, I guess, a card that potentially, in my eyes, will do 1080p fast-paced gaming on a low budget, then yes, you've got the Asus Phoenix, and yes, you've got the Palette Storm X OC. If you want to go that little bit kind of, you know, better, and maybe you've got kind of the Gigabyte ecosystem going, then yeah, you might want to go for the, the Gigabyte card at £158. If you want to go all out, then yes, you have the MSI card. Honestly, I'm... I'm finding it hard at the moment, pre-benchmarks, to recommend the MSI card in its fullest because based on kind of Gaming X cards in the past, it's all been about the performance of how it actually performs in game, how quiet it is, and just how cool it actually keeps it uh, underneath this amazing uh, cooler and shroud that's on there. So yeah, bit of a hollow kind of video, this one. Can't really say too much without fancy editing and showing you the benchmarks. So I think really I've got to leave it there. Let me know in the comments section below which card you'd go for and uh, and why, basically. Would you bo even bother with a 1650? Would you move up to a 1660 or even a 1660 Ti? I'm finding it hard to kind of bridge that gap. Or if you didn't want to go Nvidia, would you just go for an RX 5570? $124.99. So almost £10 cheaper than this MSRP card. And this is a Pulse Edition as well, so this is, you know, a little bit special in comparison to just an MSRP RX 570. So yeah, AMD have uh, obviously seen what's coming up with this card, and that's why they've done the price drops on this. 
it's an interesting one, but um, and I'd never thought I'd actually end a video by saying, run the benchmarks. Run the benchmarks. Let's go. So guys, as I said earlier on in this video, I will be sort of, you know, doing a bit of a voiceover over some of the charts. So let's start off by looking at 3D Mark. As you can see, the Gigabyte and the MSI are actually very, very close uh, with their results. Uh, other than that, we kind of, you know, saw the results going where we expected it to kind of you know with the with the cheapest ones performing you know that not as great i guess and then the more expensive ones uh, coming out on top this is pretty much the same in time spy the cheapest is kind of the worst performing if you want to look at it like that with the more expensive being the better performing cards uh, again sort of you know close battle between the gigabyte and msi uh, which is a bit of a shame considering the msi is actually quite a bit more expensive in Unigen Superposition 4K, the Gigabyte does get ahead ever so slightly, but again, this could actually swap around in each run. If we were to run this kind of test, you know, over and over and over, we may see kind of the MSI and the Gigabyte just sort of trade in places a little bit. Now in Tomb Raider, we did see the MSI card come out on top, followed by the Gigabyte card, Palette, and then the Azus. But really, there was only kind of, you know, two to sort of you know three frames really in it between sort of each card so nothing really out of the ordinary and it just shows you know that them overclocks are just helping you to sort of propel the cards just that little bit in deus ex gigabyte actually came out on top again but only just uh, i guess the rest of sort of you know the results for this are actually pretty self-explanatory uh, again seeing sort of the cheaper msrp cards coming just with slightly less frames per second and then the uh, the gigabyte card actually coming out on top but very very close results to the MSI. So in Battlefield 5, it was the same kind of results again. We had the Palette card and the Azus card very, very close indeed uh, with the MSRP pricing sort of 48 to 50 frames per second. Uh, the MSI card for some reason did actually perform the same as the Azus. So no real kind of benefit having that card for this game and paying the extra premium for it. And then the Gigabyte card only really one frame per second more. So uh, again, same kind of pecking order that we'd expect. Ghost Recon was exactly the same again with a Palette card at 1080p getting 40 frames per second as we move up to the more expensive cards sort of at 48 frames per second with the msi card uh, so a nice little kind of boost i guess uh, you could see uh, when going from a kind of you know even though it is a pre-overclock card to something with just you know uh, a bit more guts behind it but is that worth the extra premium that's up to you in Far Cry, we saw exactly the same again with the palette card scoring 51 frames per second, an achievable, uh, pretty you know solid frame rate, moving up to sort of the MSI and Gigabyte cards at uh, 56 and 57 frames per second. So again, a nice little boost, but uh, that's something you'll have to consider when looking at the price of the cards compared to that extra performance that you get from it. Metro was again exactly the same. I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit here, but we did see the MSI coming out on top but only just uh, sort of, you know, points of uh, one frame per second at 1080p and then exactly the same at 1440p. Other than that, nothing really else of the ordinary uh, when looking at the Palette, Azus and Gigabyte cards. And then uh, the last game in our sort of testing was The Division 2. So looking at 1080p, uh, again, all our benchmarks are done at high, but we've got the palette card coming in at 48. And then a nice little jump as you go up towards the MSI at 57 frames per second. So you're getting closer to that magic 60 frames per second number. Obviously, you could dial down some of the graphical settings to sort of, you know, just inch it over the, uh, the 60 frames per second marker. But I don't really think you're going to sort of see much of a difference between it. 57 is, you know, a, a really good number to be gaming at. If you do move up to 14, 40p then you can kind of get 36 frames per second but again you could just sort of you know tweak around with the with the graphical setting to really sort of get that down a little bit now power consumption this is where we actually saw the gigabyte card was using the most at idle and surprisingly the msi actually used the least at idle so they must have sort of tweaked something somewhere um you know considering what it was able to get just to kind of you know get them figures down a little bit at load, the palette is kind of perfect, really, for a low-powered rig. Obviously, if you are looking at sort of, you know, a mini ITX powerhouse, then the palette card seems like it's going to be the one to fit the job. The MSI does actually use the most power consumption at load, but we kind of expected that with that big beefy cooler and uh, obviously RGB lighting, that kind of thing on there as well. Temperatures, the palette absolutely rocked it at idle somehow. For an MSRP card with... I guess not the greatest looking cooler out there. It actually did really, really well, as well as at load. So I guess you don't really need a fancy cooler, but one thing I will say is, damn, it was noisy at idle. Um, talking about acoustics, so palette was, yeah, extremely noisy at idle, but it didn't really change much at load. So I guess that's something to do with the fan curve based on sort of, you know, my, my brief testing with the card, uh, trying to get this 
kind of video out today uh, on launch day, but um, yeah, a little bit disappointed there. The Azus and the MSI cards come out on top, but the MSI is zero decibels at idle. So uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So overall, looking at the four cards, I guess you have the palette if you want good performance for low money, but watch out for that fan profile. Yes, it's not the greatest looking card. Yes, it's not going to be using sort of, you know, the best quality of materials, but you are getting an MSRP card that, you know, the performance really is up there um, or very, very close to sort of, you know, some of the more expensive cards. If you want a bit of an all-rounder, then there is the Azus card. Uh, this is especially kind of helpful if the pallet isn't actually available in your country. So I believe that in the US, you can't actually buy pallet cards, or if you can, they're quite kind of few and far between. So obviously the Azus one is going to be the one to go for. Slightly better kind of build quality, but if it was me looking at an Azus card, I'd maybe looking, be looking at something like a Strix card, just something that has a bit more style to it. If you kind of desire a bit of a mixture of kind of performance, looks, RGB and kind of the whole package, then yeah, I guess the Gigabyte card would be the one to go for. It is slightly cheaper than the MSI card and kind of, you know, offers, I guess, similar performance. In some, some of our results, as you saw, the Gigabyte was actually kind of ahead, but a lot of this would come down to margin of error. Sometimes, you know, if we retested, we might have seen the MSI card sort of, you know, inch it. Now, if you do want kind of extreme build quality, RGB, performance, looks, kind of the whole kit and caboodle, then the MSI card is going to be the one to go for. I mean, build quality wise, it is solid as a rock. Out of the four cards, definitely the most solid. If you want, you know, performance, then yes, it does have it, but very, very similar to the Gigabyte card. It looks absolutely amazing. I'll give it that. It is absolutely fantastic. It's probably the best looking 1650 out there, but damn that price. It's just too expensive. So overall, I guess uh, the other thing that you really kind of need to look at is the RX 570. Now, the RX 570 is actually faster for about the same money, if not a little bit cheaper. But one thing you do have to consider is that the RX 570 runs hotter, is more power hungry, and well, generally, depending on the model that you go for, is going to be louder. So when I mentioned earlier on in this video about kind of having that mini ITX power powerhouse kind of you know system yeah an rx 570 just isn't going to cut it there you also have to remember that with the rx 570 because it has been out quite a while it seems that it might be tapped out due to the drivers there's no more kind of performance that could be eked out of it whereas nvidia could maybe get a little bit more performance out of uh, the 1650s uh, just you know with driver updates game updates uh, sort of you know utilizing curing a little bit more Obviously, we didn't look at overclocking today because we wanted to get these results out as soon as possible. But yes, overclocking is going to be possible on this. And potentially, if you guys comment uh, below if you want to see something, then maybe we can uh, do an overclocking feature on this. And the other last thing that you have to remember with 1650 is they are very, very efficient compared again to the RX 570. That's kind of out the window with AMD. They've never been known for kind of having, you know, extreme efficiency, uh, which I think is a fair point to say. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and sorry, it's been a bit of a weird one with kind of, you know, all of our results at the end and me talking at the beginning, not having anything to really go off. But uh, hopefully you guys can kind of understand why we had to do it this way because of the way that NVIDIA kind of, um, you know, decided to run this launch with uh, in terms of press samples and actually getting hold of the driver. Until next time, guys, I'm Andy Raphael. See you later. Bye bye.